as our nights grow longer and our days grow short. We look on these earthly signs and remember God's promise to our world. Christ, our light and our hope, will come. O Key of David, Jesus Christ, the gates of heaven open at your command. Come and show us the way to salvation. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. So we have entered into the third Sunday of Advent. We are well on the road and this is the week, I think, when we really start to realise that uh, Carol services are coming thick and fast. I really do hope that you will be able to uh, join in a carol service throughout the team. Um, there are plenty, so have a look on your pew sheets or on our Christmas card with all our dates on there. Um, and um, there's also carols being sung at the Rope Makers for beer and carols evening. So look out for that too. Um, we are in that countdown and I, I'm very lucky because somebody, some very kind person, gave me a, a very uh, wonderful advent calendar. It hasn't got chocolate, but it has got lots of gorgeous teas. And when you uh, take um, a tea bag off the advent calendar, there's a little message underneath, like this one, for instance. This is the cup that's the carol singer's friend. Sing loud with herbs that ease and tend. So hopefully I'll be in good voice for carols. I think uh, in knowing that we are counting down, there is um, um, a kind of risk that we might just be in a flurry. So I'm going to read you um, a line, um, a, a verse from a rewritten carol. Um, uh, it was the carol um, as with gladness but this one has been rewritten as as with madness 
So this is a warning to each of us not to let this season rush by without taking time to be still. As with madness we prepare for this festive time of year, as we rush and count the days, Advent passes in a haze. So may our feet take us to places where we will meet you. So let's journey on together as we come to worship God. Let us pray. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right, with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the fins now hidden in darkness, and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. So may the Almighty and merciful Lord grant you pardon and forgiveness of all your sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, grant us a glimpse of your glory, that we may rejoice in your presence and abide in your peace. For Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. John said to the crowds coming out to be baptised by him, You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is already at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. What should we do then? the crowd asked. John answered, The man with two tunics should share with him who has none, and the one who has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptised. Teacher, they asked, what should we do? Don't collect any more than you are required to, he told them. Then some soldiers asked him, and what should we do? He replied, don't extort money and don't accuse people falsely. Be content with your pay. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptise you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptise you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And with many other words, John exhorted the people and preached the good news to them. Good morning. This morning in church, we will be lighting the third candle on our Advent wreath. 
and today we are reminded of the journey of John the Baptist. Our gospel reading in Luke also reminds us of that journey that John the Baptist took in preparing the way for Jesus. Our gospel reading today is full of so much information and so many lessons that we could learn. We could probably meditate on this passage for the rest of the church year. However, the bit that really stood out for me was when the people went before John the Baptist, before they were baptised and asked him, what should I do? And John says to the tax collector, do not take more than is necessary. And the soldiers go before him and say, what should we do? And he says to them, do not extort people. I have pondered quite a lot this week. If I was to stand before John the Baptist and to say to him, what should I do? What would be his response? I wonder whether he would tell me to be kinder, more patient, more giving towards people. I'm sure that if you asked my daughters, they would definitely say he would tell me to be more patient with them. You see, John knew what was to come. Some people say that hindsight is a beautiful thing and we have that in our Bibles. We have that in the time that all the disciples took to write all of those amazing stories and lessons that we have. We are far more equipped than those that stood before John the Baptist. But what about John? What incredible faith, courage he had that he didn't totally know what was to come. He knew what was promised and it was his faith. And that faith in God that helped him, that guided him, that gave him and resourced him to set that path for Jesus to come and to do the things that we know he does. John had moments, as we all have moments, where a little bit of doubt set in or where he wasn't feeling so courageous. We know that when he was in jail, he became concerned and he sent message to Jesus just to clarify. And I think that's because it's okay. It's okay to be fearful. It's okay not to always feel courageous. It's okay to fall back and rely on our faith to say, Jesus, where are you in this situation? But it's also important that the message that we take from John the Baptist, from his courageous acts, from what he did, for the things that he said to the people that came before him, it's important that we understand that he led the way for those people. They knew Christ through him. And in this season where people know what Advent is mainly about, they certainly know what Christmas is about. 
it's the time of year where as Christians, we are called to be courageous. We are called to rely on our faith and to be able to share the good news, to be able to be a light in our communities, to be able to lead the way for others and set the path for faith. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Lord, help us to know that we dwell in you and you are in us. It is you, Lord, that seek out the straying and the lost. You desire to deliver all who are in trouble. You set out to rescue all who are oppressed. You come to us now and seek to bring us home. We rejoice in your presence and your almighty power. May your church share in your healing and saving power. We pray for the church working in areas of violence and rejection, for all Christians who are persecuted for their faith. We pray for areas of our world where people are devalued and discarded, for all who are outcasts and all who suffer from ethnic violence and prejudice. We pray that the rich and those in authority may bring relief and hope to the poor. We pray for all who are involved in tax collecting and in the use of our taxes, for all who are in the armed forces and for all who maintain peace and order. Lord, we rejoice that you are with us in our homes. Make us sensitive in our dealings with each other, attentive to the needs and desires of our loved ones. We pray for all homes where there is fear and abuse. Mighty God, you are our strength. We pray for all who are frail and fearful, all who are weary and weak, all who are in pain or suffering. We remember especially those we know and love in a moment of silence. We rejoice with all who have left the troubles of this world and now experience the glorious liberty of the children of God. We pray for our loved ones departed. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us, to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we continue watching and waiting, looking for signs all around us for Christ's coming, receive God's blessing. May God the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to come among us with great humility, open our eyes to look for his coming again. May God the Son give you grace to live in the light of his coming as Redeemer and Judge. May God the Holy Spirit free you from sin and make you holy and bring you to eternal life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you journey with this Advent. Now and ever we ask it. Amen. We go into the world to walk in God's light, to rejoice in God's love and to reflect in God's glory. <laughs>